What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Wanted to have a discussion about where we are with Chantal coming home. And because I'm a reaction channel, I have a different perspective. And there's no way around that. But I've often thought to myself, if I was just a viewer, if I was just, you know, casually watching this, if I can go back and remember when she first went to Kuwait, right? I saw the, the picture out the plane window was the moment where I thought to myself, okay, that's either fake and she's taken that photo from somewhere or she's really there, right? There was no turning back. And there is a distinct difference, at least in my perspective, between the Cuba trip where there was a lot of uncertainty. You know, we knew she was going to Cuba, but we really didn't know what the intention was and what the result was going to be. I mean, we definitely found out what the results were going to be. But I think going to Kuwait, we kind of had more context of she was going to meet someone there. And they were going to kind of start to do their own thing. Now, from that, the couple's channel was kind of born, if you will. And to me, when I look at it from a creator standpoint, I know that the couple's channel has not met their own expectations. Okay? They wanted 10,000 subscribers. They wanted a channel that stands alone. And they didn't meet either of those requirements. And I would think from a monetary standpoint... That channel is not able to sustain itself. It can't pay for the trips back and forth. It can't pay for what they're doing. It just simply can't. And when I think about why that is, you know, I think a lot of it comes down to a wrong approach. Right? When you have the channel Sala and Chantal, you know, you're essentially trying to create your own brand, right? Your own entity. You're hoping that someone will go from couples vlog to couples vlog to couples vlog and just happen chance bump into this and then see something that they like and continue to watch it. I think what she hoped was she could get away from the character of Foodie Beauty and kind of evolve, if you will, into the character of Chantal and Sala. That has not happened. She is still very much dependent on using herself as Foodie Beauty to promote her channel with Sala. And that should be a major cause for concern for her. Because by all accounts, in 90 days, this channel should be standing alone. And it's simply not. So at that point as a creator, you either have to decide, this is an adventure I'm going to continue with, which she's done before with, you know, the Beezer show, which is what this actually preceded. Or you have to reevaluate and reassess what you're doing. And I think that's going to be something they have to determine together. And I hate to even sit here and give suggestions, but you know, the reality is it, it's going to take an investment. It's going to take learning because what we've seen is, and I think look no further than just the retire two people that go out and do something for the day and then try to create as much content as they can from that day. So we're going to go out, we're going to have lunch, we're going to go to an island, and we're going to come back, and we're going to try to create four vlogs from this one day. And if you just think about that in the theme of, you know, making a movie, right? A movie isn't made in a day, right? It's a two-hour production. It's not made in a week. It can be, but, you know, most, most cases, it's not. It's months, months, constantly filming things over to get things right. And that's where Foodie really has not been able to hone in on how to create something that will captivate a viewer and generate your own brand, generate your own couples channel, and be able to sustain a separate audience than what you have. So you have to sit down and understand that it very much is you. You know, there's a lack of quality in this content, and it shows, right? When you're trying to drag everything out, you end up with a lot of B-roll footage, you end up a lot of musical montages, you end up with a lot of content that does not have any context to what you're doing. And anyone with an astute eye can see. You didn't need all these scenes. You don't have any dialogue. You don't have any methodology to, here's the storyboard of what we want to do why we're going there, what we're doing when we get there, what met our expectations, what didn't meet our expectations, and now we're returning home. None of that exists. 
it is the equivalent of someone just going out, and I mean this literally, filming the phone out the window while they drive somewhere and then getting there. That is not a vlog. And I think that shows in the response this channel has gotten. So, you know, with this time off, a couple things have to happen. Number one, someone has to learn how to film. Someone has to learn how to edit. And I mean actual transitions. I don't mean editing in software. I mean, like, we're going to creatively do a transition from one scene to the next. We're going to storyboard something out, and we're going to understand how we're going to get from one scene to another. You're going to have to get rid of the phone and get an actual camera. And I respect the fact that phones today do incredible things. And yes, in the hands of a talented director, a phone can be used to make a TV show. It can be used to make a commercial. It can be used to make a movie. It can make anything, right? But when you don't have that, you need a quality camera. You need a gimbal. You need something that's going to hold an image steady. You need something that's going to allow you to go get microphones so that you have improved audio something that looks like a final product and you're gonna have to come to the ideology that one good vlog a week can get you 20 to 30 thousand views instead of three really poor vlogs a week getting 10,000 views a piece the income is going to be the same but in fairness, the workload is going to be less because you're only going to be creating one video. Now, you may have more stress on you because that video is kind of putting all your eggs in one basket, but people are going to get very much overburdened with these vlogs and more than likely stop watching them. But if you can put together one quality, 50 quality vlogs a year, then you're going to have no problem growing a channel because you're giving an audience something it wants to watch, not giving an audience something you had to create. And there's a fine line there, but way too many times Chantal is falling on the opposite side of this feels like I have to go through the motions because this channel has to make money because here we are in Kuwait, we're trying to do a couples channel, let's just keep trying but we're not actively trying to make better content. And that starts with the equipment you use and the understanding you have of what you're doing. It's an ambitious goal to say, I want to have a couples channel. It's even more ambitious to start filming it and putting it on YouTube. But at some point, you have to reflect and say, this is not meeting the standard that couples channels have for what a vlog should be. And I'm not capable of sustaining this audience on my own because, quite frankly, people don't care about my relationship enough to watch us go to Applebee's and order riblets. And yes, that was an episode. So, as much as I know all the advice I give them constantly falls on deaf ears, I do know if they continue down this path, and probably getting full circle on this video, if she goes back to Kuwait and attempts this round two, if you will, how many people are going to be willing to watch this same arc play out? Because I think for reaction channels as well, it's just not going to be something people want to gravitate towards because it's not something that's captivated people's imagination or attention. Love to know your guys' thoughts on this. Appreciate you watching this. You know, just like a foodie vlog, I will be back as soon as I can with more content.